Well, hello, folks. Here we are with another scintillating technology adventure from NOS LLC. That would be we. Today, we're going to look at oscillator operation for newbies. So if you don't know what an oscillator is, or you're a newbie and you want to know, you're in the right place. Now, some of you, I hope, have been following the sequence uh, of our uh, technology adventures here, because this is video number 10 in the series um, eventually getting to telephonic transmission but of course if you're a newbie you won't won't have the underlying technology fundamentals probably so that's what we're doing here in the first uh, part of this series so this is number 10 if I'm saying something in this particular video that you don't understand it's probably because I covered it in one of the previous videos so you might want to go to our uh, playlist to uh, start at the beginning so what is the subject at hand here? Well, it's the operation and terminology used in uh, amplification. Uh, well, we already did amplification in uh, oscillation. Uh, in this instance, I got my little uh, hero here, Jost Moaf. He's uh, trying to decide between two uh, donuts here. See, so his head's oscillating back and forth. Now, in his head, he's probably doing more like vacillating, but his head is oscillating going back and forth back and forth right so an oscillation is just a movement back and forth you know in this instance between two donuts actually I think I would just buy both of the donuts but um, he messed around too long and the donuts went away mm, so is that an example of electronic oscillation well I guess if you stretch it really far you could say yes in his head there's a little bit of electrical energy being expended trying to decide which donut but of course we're trying to go towards uh, electronic stuff. Let's move ahead just a little bit away from the donuts because most people understand oscillation to be something like this, like uh, an old um, grandfather clock with a uh, pendulum that's swinging back and forth. That's the horo hor horological reversals. If, if you're uh, into clocks and stuff, you're a horologist. So we've got this uh, pendulum swinging back and forth. Now that's certainly an example of oscillation. And if it were an uh, electric clock, I guess you could say, yeah, there's some uh, electronics involved there. But if it's a mechanical clock, of course, there isn't any. So we, once again, need to move forward. Um, how about this one? Uh, mechanical, electrical, or electronic. Uh, what we're really doing here is jerking the electrons back and forth. And we can do that by reversing the polarity of, in this instance, the power supply. Because I'm using this as an example of um, moving the electrons back and forth. You know, I push them not one way and then I turn them around. And then I push them one way and I turn them around. And you can see that over here on our voltmeter that's watching the electron uh, voltage, the electromotive force. You know, so when I'm moving them back and forth like that, you can see boink, boink. They don't make that noise, by the way. I'm, I'm making that noise. Um, and I'm driving a load over here, which is a coil of wire. And I put this on here just as a kind of reminder, because once again, we did this in a previous um, little video, is that this creates a magnetic field that expands out and then contracts as the voltage or the pressure uh, or the amount of current flowing through here. And I don't care which way you go, um, conventional current flow or electrons. Uh, so this creates a magnetic field that expands and contracts with the changes in the voltage and current being applied to it. And also, uh, interestingly enough here, uh, once again as kind of a reminder, when you reverse the polarity that, whoops, sorry, went too far. When I reverse the polarity uh, of the electron movement or the current flow movement, um, the field actually reverses polarity. So we'll be using that later on. It's the only reason I put this in here as an example of the load. So this certainly is an oscillator because I'm changing things back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But we really want to get to this one, <clears throat> which is a, a truly an electronic uh, wave oscillator. I think this is a coal pits, as I recall. You know, when I was going through a technical school about 100 bazillion years ago, this is one of our tests. Is, uh, the instructors would uh, give us circuit diagrams of different kinds of um, oscillators and we had to identify them just by the way they're set up over here and I could do that for many years but um, I have to actually look to see which one they are now 
Um, and also, once again, a reference uh, back here to an earlier video, Eli the Iceman. If you don't know what this means, you really do need to go back and look at one of our earlier videos in order to understand how this, these components right here, which are generally known as a tank circuit. I'm not sure because they don't look much like a tank, but uh, that's what they've always been called. It's a combination of an inductor and some uh, capacitors here. And what happens is when you push electrons into this uh, tank circuit, they go back and forth. That's what I'm showing here with this little uh, rocker is the uh, electrons or the current, whichever way you like, goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, and I'm not going to answer that. Um, boy, they're ringing all over the place. Uh, back and forth, back and forth, like this. And this is uh, an amplifier over here. Not a lot of detail on it, but what happens is you get a little feedback over here, which pushes more energy over here to keep this thing going. So it's kind of like uh, one of those little uh, games they play with the paddle that has the rubber ball on it with a rubber band. You can bang it, but you have to keep putting a little bit of energy in to keep that oscillation or the banging of the rubber ball going. Well, that's what this does is it uh, kind of pushes more energy over here so it keeps this oscillation going back and forth. And then the output of this, I'm showing you here as a sine wave. It's a sine wave oscillator. Um, and it's usually drawn this way because this is what you would see on something like an oscilloscope. Um, and if you were to measure it out here between the output signal and the ground using a voltmeter, what you see is the meter swinging back and forth between plus and minus. So sometimes the, the voltage is plus out here and sometimes it's minus out here. And the number of times that this thing reverses itself is known as the cycles per second, or in today's environment, it's known as hertz. You know, it hurts to say that because I've been saying cycles per second for, you know, 50 years now. So, but in any case, we call that hertz. Now, a couple of things I want to point out here is even though this looks visually like it's jerking up and down, it's not the electrons or the current or the voltage is being applied to this line here as surges. So it surges this way, then back this way, then over this way and back this way. And why is that? Because our voltage is uh, effectively reversing because this is reversing back and forth and back and forth. So it creates this oscillation, an electronic oscillation, which we can visualize by a number of different ways. One, we can see it with an oscilloscope. Uh, two, we can see it with a a voltmeter, uh, providing, of course, that this is oscillating slow enough that uh, the meter can keep up. In this case, this is a very slow oscillation because this particular oscillator is actually designed for incredibly really high oscillations, which you cannot hear. Um, so what I want to do at this point is give you an example of some different kinds of oscillations here. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. Um, here is an example of um, a telephone uh, circuit oscillation that is a voice oscillation. Here's a what 300 hertz or 300 cycles per second sounds like. Hear that? That's 300 cycles per second. Now, in the telephone industry, when we're talking about voice circuits, we're talking about anything between 300 and about 3,500. So, listen to this. This is the top end of a standard voice uh, transmission over a telephone line. Here's 3,500. Now, you'd think nobody could ever make that sound. You know, even if you dropped a rock on your foot, you couldn't scream that high. But in fact, there are things called harmonics within uh, a voice range of 300 to 3500, known as the voice frequency range, uh, that uh, give the, your particular voice its own characteristics. And that has to include these things like uh, very high frequency that you think you could not make. So how about this one here? If I do a sweep from, uh, let's say, 300 cycles per second, uh, up to 3,500 cycles per second. Right here, I'm going to use a sine wave generator. The thing that you're seeing you know, right here would look like this on an oscilloscope. Here's an example of what we would do to uh, check the uh, quality of a voice circuit on a standard telephone line. Let's see if I can get it to go here.
So that would be a sweep that we would do and I have done many times in order to uh, verify that the uh, loss across the, all of that uh, those frequencies from 300 right here all the way up to 3500 right there now if we were to watch this on an oscilloscope what would happen is there'd be lots more of these up and downs or more of these jerking back and forth in a, a particular uh, second and once we get up uh, to you know above about uh, this I guess this is someplace probably around 30 or 40 cycles per second the meters can't keep up and so you have to go to something like an oscilloscope or some kind of device in order to measure those so that's what an oscillator does it creates this back and forth jerking of uh, current or voltage uh, illustrated by waves right here on an oscilloscope or out in the ocean for that matter so now you know what an oscillator does and it requires that we uh, use the components that we've looked at in all the uh, previous videos uh, inductors capacitors resistors and uh, amplifiers in this case just a standard transistor triode three element device Right, so there you go. Thanks for watching. 10-4. Roger Rubber Ducky will finally get now to um, some of the actual telecommunication things. I began right here with this one, showing you the sweep frequencies and the frequencies we're using. We'll continue on now that you're becoming a technical expert in the basics of electronics.